Welcome to your cataract or intraocular lens implant explanation. Dr. Alexic does this type of surgery in a theater in hospital. It's therefore referred to as an in-hospital day case. If you are on any blood thinning medication, we would like you to stop taking the medication 7 to 10 days prior to surgery. First consult with your GP or physician whether it's okay for you to not take the blood thinning medication. If you are on any other medication, you can take that as per normal on the day of surgery. Dr. Alexic does this type of sur surgery normally under a local anesthetic referred to as a conscious sedation. Therefore, you do not have to be nil per mouth prior to the surgery. Unless otherwise discussed, we can do the surgery under a general anesthetic. On the day of surgery, we would like you to, just before you go to theatre, have something light to eat. When you get to the front of the hospital, your name will be on Dr. Lexic's theatre list together with your authorization number. You are not going to dress over into hospital clothes, therefore we ask you to dress comfortably, dress slightly warmer than usual. You will be given a gown to put on over your own clothes. Once admitted through to the ward, you will meet um, our anaesthetist. He's going to ask you a few questions, he's going to take your blood pressure, and then they will put a dilating drop into the eye that's going to be operated on. Once they see that your eye is fully dilated, they'll take you through to the theatre, where you will lie on a flat bed with your head in a ring-like cushion to keep you stable. They will cover the eye that's not being operated on with a drape. You don't have to worry about keeping the eye open yourself. Doctor uses small speculum to keep the eye open. Also, it is a painless procedure. No needles will get close to your eye. Doctor will use an anesthetic spray around the eye area to, to numb the whole area. The anesthetist will also have, either in your arm or hand, a small butterfly needle um, to, if they see that you are very restless or uh, very stressed out, they give you a little bit more anesthetic. Most people tend to fall asleep during the procedure. Let's discuss how the actual procedure in theatre takes place. Now, just to backtrack a little bit, when you look at yourself in the mirror, this is how you see your eye, the coloured part of the eye and the white part of the eye. When you look at it from the side, this is how you see it, your cornea, your lens and the retina. Now, when, your when, your lens, when you were born, the lens is crystal clear, like a washed window. The lens sits there. At that point, then, light goes through your cornea, it gets bent through your lens, and it comes down to one point of focus at the back of the eye. As we get older, the clear lens becomes misty. Think of a window that is not washed, a dirty window. Now, you can have the best, most expensive glasses here. Light rays will travel through your glasses, it will get bent by your cornea, and when it gets to the lens, it will scatter. It won't come down to one point of focus at the back of the eye. So, in order to improve your vision, we need to remove the cataract, but we can't remove something and not put something back. So, how will Dr. Alexic actually remove this cataract? At the, on the side of the eye, you'll make a 2 mm incision. Through that incision, you will go with what we call a FACO emulsification machine, which is an ultrasound that you'll use to break this lens, that is now the cataract, into small little pieces. In order to be able to extract it through that same 2 mm incision, this lens sits in a lens capsule. We leave the capsule behind because that serves as a structure for the new artificial lens to rest against. When doctor is busy doing the ultrasound, he can then be able to determine, determine whether, there's a, whether there is maybe a weak spot in your capsule. There's no way for us to determine prior to surgery whether there's a weak spot in the capsule. If there is a weak spot, what doctor will then do, instead of using an intraocular implant with two arms, he'll use one with three arms. Doctor takes for each and every patient different lens options to theater. He doesn't want to be in a position where there isn't something for him to use. The disappointment in the case of a weak spot comes in if your lens choice was the multifocal intraocular lens because the multifocal lens doesn't come in an option with three arms. 
doctor will then revert back to correcting your distance vision, after which you will still need to use reading glasses for reading. Now, let's assume you have a nice strong capsule. These lenses come pre-loaded in what we call a lens injector. Through that same 2mm incision, doctor will inject the new lens, he'll unfold it and put it in the correct position. Now, you can imagine a 2mm incision will close by itself, so there's no need for stitches or anything. Doctor will put an antibiotic drop in, he'll put an anti-inflammatory drop in, they'll cover the eye with a shield, they'll put you in a wheelchair, take you back to the um, ward where they will offer you a cup of coffee or tea and a sandwich. Half an hour or so later, when they see that you're all good, someone can then drive you up. Prior to surgery, you will receive a script to buy your drops from your local pharmacy. You will also receive a drop guide on how to use your drops. We will ask you to take your drops with you to the clinic. When you get home after your surgery, you will use your drops every two hours until you go to bed. You don't have to wake up throughout the night in order to put your drops in. You can just sleep normally. On that day, after the surgery, you will notice that when you put your drops in, when you take your um, shield off, that your vision is double. You might even notice when you look at yourself in the mirror, or when someone else is looking at you, that your, point, your eye is pointing into a direction. The reason for that is that the anesthetic has not yet worn off your eye muscles. Following day, when you wake up, you'll see that your um, pupil size is much smaller and that your vision is not double anymore and that your eye is pointing straight. You may take the shield off and you can take a nice warm cloth just to get rid of all the stickiness of the tape. Um, we're going to ask you to attend a follow-up appointment the following day at our consultation rooms. Also, on the morning after you've woken up, you are allowed to take a shower or to wash your face. Um, the reason for the appointment the following day is that we want to make sure that there's no signs of an infection, that your vision is starting to improve, that, there's, um, that the lens is positioned well and that the pressure inside the eye is normal. Normally, we do, if we are doing both eyes surgery, we do it a week apart. Um, but it, it's completely up to you when you want to do your second eye surgery. If it is a week apart, what we will then normally do if you wear glasses, we will pop the lens um, out of your glasses uh, that, that's in front of the operated eye just to balance you until you get to your second eye surgery. Or if you wear contact lenses, then you'll obviously just wear the contact lenses, the contact lens in the white eye. What is important for us as well is to have a follow-up appointment five to six weeks after your surgery. Um, to that appointment, there will be a charge, and the reason is we want to scan your eye. What can happen, sometimes when um, activity takes place in the front part of the eye, swelling can occur at the back of the eye. You come to us five, six weeks later and you say, but my vision is not as good as it was right after the surgery. And what we will then do once we get the scan is we'll discover that, that you do have some swelling. We, um, we get rid of the swelling by asking you to take a water tablet for a month. This doesn't have to happen, and it doesn't happen often, but if it is going to happen, that is about the time frame of when it will happen. It won't happen six months, a year, two years later. People normally ask me, are these lenses for life? And yes, these lenses are designed to last you for the rest of your life. And the next question is, can I develop another cataract? And the answer is no. But what can happen is, the capsule that the new artificial lens is resting against, Protein deposits can start to cling to the capsule and that will give you the impression that you are looking through a mist and you will come back and you say, but I'm sure I'm developing another cataract. This doesn't happen overnight and it, I can't tell you when it's going to happen. It can happen six, nine months, a year, two years from now. Um, think of it almost as plaque on your teeth. How will we get rid of it? Um, uh, it's a once-off procedure, not like plaque where you need to go every six months. We put a um, Put a dilated drop into your eye, you'll sit in a similar machine as to what you are used to, chin, forehead. Doctor will clean those protein deposits with laser. It's called a YAG laser. It's a painless procedure, it's about five minutes. You, all you hear is this tick, tick, tick sound. You feel as if it's not doing anything. 
And afterwards you still think that he didn't do anything because your pupil will still be dilated, you will still be blurry and you will be sensitive to light. Um, the following day when you wake up, you will realize that your pupil is now back to its normal size and your vision is back to, to where it was. And the other thing that we really don't want is um, after the surgery is for you to, to get an infection. And the way you're going to avoid getting an infection is to not use dirty tissues to dab your eyes, use your drops as we prescribe, don't go to places where there's a lot of germs like um, gyms or public swimming pools or something like that. Also don't do strenuous exercise for the first two three weeks after surgery. You can run, you can walk, but we don't want you to lift heavy weights or to move your furniture around or, or anything like that. I would like to now discuss with you the different intraocular lens options that is available. The first option that you can choose from is to make both eyes as clear as possible for distance vision. By distance vision, I mean television, driving, anything that's arm's length and further away from you. Then, in saying that, anything arm's length and closer to you, you will need reading glasses. Initially, we only prescribe over-the-counter reading glasses, plus 2, plus 2.5. Four to six weeks after your surgery, we'll do a proper test should you need a customized pair of reading glasses. The second option is if you would like to be less dependent on reading glasses. Take note, not free from reading glasses. This option entails where we take your dominant eye and we correct it fully for distance vision. Your non-dominant eye will correct for reading, but not reading like here, more reading like there. We describe it um, often as, like, think of shopping vision. It's a lifestyle option. We want to make you, as I said, not free, but less dependent. You go to a restaurant, you can read a menu. You can do a shop, you can read a price tag, but you can't necessarily read the small, small uh, back of the ingredients or the expiry date or something like that. So you're less dependent, but not free. Four to six weeks after the surgery, we will ask you to come back for us to do an eye test, what we call a refraction, and then you will use a customized pair of reading glasses that, that corrects for the fact that you are the one eye is for far and the one eye is for near. The, the Germans also refer to this as blended vision. So the two the aims blend into each other to give you less dependency on glasses. Now the third option and most popular option these days is the multifocal intraocular lens implant. Now, very clear to understand that the multifocal intraocular lens doesn't work the same as multifocal glasses. It's not the top is for distance and the bottom is for reading, and then you need to like find where's your area to read through with distortions on the side. Doesn't work like that at all. You can see far and you can see near. But you need to know or understand that the near has been, is set by the specific lens design. And typically with the lenses that we use, your near will be roughly 35-40 centimeters from you, which is a natural reading distance. But should you prefer to read something here or there, you'll have to adjust your world a little bit by maybe bringing your computer a little bit closer, when you lie in bed, put your book maybe a little bit further away. So that's something that you'll need to adjust to. With multifocal intraocular lens implants, when you drive at night, you'll see a light and you'll see a halo around the light. If you're suffering from advanced cataracts or more mature, you will already have halos around lights when you drive at night. In the beginning, it's quite obvious, it gets less, but it's not going to go away completely. It's also a very subjective experience. Some will really notice it and they will tell everyone about it. Others will say they see it, but they stop bothering them. Should bother them? Should it bother them? And um, also, to our knowledge, these lenses have not yet stopped anyone from from wanting to drive at night. With multifocal implants, you also need to know we are working on a human tissue. Actually, with all the implants, what we aim for is what we really want to achieve. But your tissue, my tissue, the next person's tissue heals in a different way. We 
So as we aim for our target, if we may be, be slightly over or slightly under, we will either then prescribe a pair of glasses for, for you to correct for that little bit of a residual refractive error, or if possible, we can always correct that with laser. We then refer to this whole process as a two-step procedure. What you also need to notice with all three of these options, remember we are replacing your cataract, your lens that is now the cataract, with a lens that is like as clear as a diamond. So you will, lots more light will enter your eye. At the moment your cataract is almost protecting you from the sun. So with all three of these options, you will be much more light sensitive than what you are now. If you have a light colored eye or a light colored skin, even more so. So you will definitely wear your sunglasses much more often than what you are used to.